Hi everybody, uh, today I wanted to talk a little bit about this uh, Klinger volume oscillator. Um, and I wanted to look at a couple different uh, volume based oscillators, uh, including a regular volume oscillator, uh, a money flow index, and a chicken money flow. Um, so, but primarily we're going to focus on the Klinger volume oscillator. So, what I wanted to do uh, is first of all, uh, if you're familiar with a regular oscillator, um, it's basically the difference between two moving averages. So right here you, you have a short cycle of 12 and a long cycle of 26. And it takes the moving average over 12 periods and 26 periods and it's just of the volume. Um, so that, that's what the volume oscillator does. So it takes this uh, over 12 cycles and over 26 cycles and takes the difference between those two and then you can start to see where the volume spikes. So on this particular chart you can see the volume spikes here, here, and here, and here. Um, but the problem with a volume, regular volume oscillator is you don't know whether or not that volume is positive or negative. Um, and the good news is that the Klinger volume oscillator um, essentially does keep track of the positive volume or negative volume. So um, the further it is away from zero, so unlike uh, a, this volume oscillator when it's negative basically means that the volume is very, very, very low. Um, and uh, um, But basically what happens is that um, over time uh, you can kind of see where the positive and negative volumes are. So this is a graph of the S&P 500 daily chart. Uh, spy spy chart um, and you can see here that uh, basically the negative volume is highest uh, during this peak here so this is around uh, 124 of 22 um, and you can see that uh, basically the volume oscillator does show a peak of volume but it doesn't tell you what type um, and further you know what type of volume it is based on this uh, signal in the clear singer signal indicator so because this signal is uh, over, the red signal is over the white signal, you can basically see that that's a negative trend. And up here, you can see indeed that's a negative trend. Now, this is a hike and ashy chart just to make it a little more visible. Um, but you can see that in general, that is a negative trend. Um, but I just use hike and ashy to show it a little more clearly. Um, and you can see that there. So um, now, what I like to do is basically use this chart. Uh, on different time frames, so you can see uh, well, this is a daily time frame. Um, you can also do weekly, um, and you see the difference here. And this will go even further back in a time. So you can see uh, we had a major spike of volume, negative volume, back here for the coronavirus at three uh, twenty three twenty. Uh, but basically, there's also some other spikes of volume back here, twenty eighteen, and so on. Um, and if we even go further back. Uh, you can kind of compare the volume spikes that we've seen. Um, uh, interestingly, um, it would say that some of these other volume spikes are bigger uh, than the other ones, relatively speaking. So what it does is it actually adds up the volume on these. So you can see back in here, um, the 2008 crash was actually more significant, and it does show up as more significant on the cleaner volume here. Um, and you can see right here that coronavirus is maybe twice and there's even another spike in here, uh, 2011, that was even worse than uh, coronavirus in terms of negative volume. Um, so some of this is not visible, um, easily visible on a regular volume chart. So I like to use the cleaner volume oscillator and you can really see it clearly. Um, and not only that, it does give you some idea of signaling. So it's not always correct, of course, um, but you can kind of get some ideas. Um, so you can see that in general, what happens is that when you have a signal that is positive, so this is showing positive volume here, right? So positive volume means probably the, the stock is going up. However, that's not always the case. So you have to use both the signal and the uh, volume measurement. So basically back in here, you can see now the volume probably is going to be negative in here. But so in this portion here of the graph, maybe it is negative. So let's look at a daily chart so you can see uh, one minute chart how this looks on a one minute chart so it's a lot more detailed uh, but you can see like this is the last day um, so we had to, basically uh, a spike of uh, 
well, let's see right here, actually, this is the 28, right? So there's a spike of volume that was negative, right, at the start of the morning, followed by a, a little bit of an upswing, right? Um, so it doesn't really show that in the price graph, um, but we can look at this on a price graph. Let's see if we can get this a little bit bigger. Price graph. Okay, so basically on the price graph, you can see um, that not only was the volume was very negative but the price didn't really drop reflected as much and actually on the positive side is where the most of the gains were made so this is another question of how the uh, clinger works right so you can't really always judge it based on just the volume or just the price you have to use actually both of them um, interestingly um, and you can see at the end of the day the biggest spike in the volume was a positive spike here um, and you can see that that was mostly all positive. Uh, there's a little part in here that was maybe considered negative, and you can see the signal indicator pops over there, the red. Kind of zoom in here a little bit. Uh, but yeah, that gives you a basic idea. So I'm gonna switch over here to a four minute or five minute chart. Um, and actually one interesting thing, you can really see the volume of to affect things for the MES because you have a nighttime flow and you have a daytime flow. So any MES is uh, S&P 500 as well, but it's for the futures market. You can see the nighttime flow, the volume stays pretty close to zero, um, but there are certain spikes in the volume. Like here we saw one last night um, at about uh, 2 a.m. Eastern time. Um, and that was a pretty significant spike in volume, even in the middle of the night. Um, relative to during the middle of the day, you could say it would be a pretty significant volume, and it was a positive spike in volume, and you can also see a positive spike here on the price chart. Um, and then later on the day, you can see as we started up the day, we got a little negative spike in the volume there, and then positive here. It's a little bit harder as in the bottom graph here to see that, but you can see there's a little bit of negative um, and then pause it, but it doesn't give you the exact details, which the clinger gives you a little bit more visually uh, helpful. Um, and then obviously the volume oscillator I put here just to kind of verify and make sure there's no mistakes uh, with this. So I keep up the volume, I keep the volume oscillator, and then I keep the clinger, clinger volume oscillator here to make sure that all three uh, make sense to me. Um, and then also there is these ones that include price and volume. So you can see near the peaks here, like the money flow, there's obviously more money being flowing into the market. Um, started off as a negative money flow um, and then went to a positive money flow here. And you can see the same thing with the chink in money flow. Um, it just doesn't show as high as the uh, money flow for the money flow index. Um, but again, um, I found the uh, chink in uh, volume oscillator to be extremely helpful. Um, it does work similarly to the MACD. Um, if you wanted to add a MACD study on here, you could do that. And you can run it side by side and kind of compare. Um, so you can see that many of these, um, if we do this zoom in here, we can kind of start to see. So you can see that basically on this particular instance, let's go back to a bigger instance here. So basically on this part, the chink in money flow actually detected it before the upswing so the volume was able to detect that it was going to be an uptrend before the MACD was able to detect it which is a good thing to know and then the same likewise on the downtrend it predicted it almost on the candle whereas the <coughs> money flow took a little bit longer to uh, do, do that and that's one, one of the reasons is that the clear volume oscillator uses exponential moving averages uh, to calculate some of these uh, on all three of the indexes that they use here. Um, I believe also the MACD uses exponential on some of them as well. Um, so, but basically uh, you can also see another trend here. Um, so this, this is a case where it's, uh, again, you can see that it crossed on the chink in money flow and then it didn't quite yet cross on the MACD. Um, so another example showing why it would be helpful to look at volume and uh, looking at uh, clean your escalator. Anyway, I hope this has really helped. Let me know what you think. Thanks again.